Welcome to International Student Brief. The content of the briefing includes. Biden promises to cancel a new batch of student loan debt. Saudi Arabia wants to be the Saudi Arabia of minerals. Votes by El Salvador's diaspora surge, likely boosting President Bukele in elections. How a post office drama galvanized Britain. Student loans to cost taxpayer an extra £10 billion. Biden promises to cancel a new batch of student loan debt. The Independent. The Biden administration has announced that certain borrowers will be eligible to have the rest of their student loans cancelled as early as next month. Borrowers who took out less than $12,000 in loans and have been in repayment for 10 years will have their remaining loans cancelled as long as they are enrolled in the Saving on a Valuable Education, SAVE, plan. The move is expected to particularly help community college borrowers, low-income borrowers, and those struggling to repay their loans. Nearly 7 million borrowers are enrolled in the SAVE plan, with 3.6 million having already had their loans cancelled. President Biden has long advocated for the cancellation of student debt and this action shows that he is keeping a campaign promise. The move comes after the Supreme Court ruled last year that the president lacks the authority to broadly cancel student loan debt. Saudi Arabia wants to be the Saudi Arabia of minerals. Economist. Saudi Arabia is looking to develop its mining sector in a bid to move away from its dependence on oil. The country has revised its estimate of its mineral wealth from $1.3 trillion to $2.5 trillion, which includes deposits of gold, copper and zinc. The government has signed agreements with Russia and America's Export-Import Bank and has set up Monera Minerals, which will invest up to $15 billion in stakes in foreign mines. The country has also launched a campaign to attract foreign investment and has created a new ministry for industry and mineral resources. Votes by El Salvador's diaspora surge, likely boosting President Bukele in elections. The Toronto Star. Over 51,000 Salvadorans living abroad have voted in El Salvador's upcoming presidential election in the first three days after the country opened overseas electronic voting for the first time. The overseas vote is expected to help President Nayib Bukele, whose administration launched the internet voting system as he seeks re-election. Most Salvadorans living abroad reside in the United States. Bukele is considered extremely popular among Salvadorans due to his crackdown on gang violence. However, opposition leaders and observers have accused him of undermining democracy. Bukele's bid for re-election, in defiance of a constitutional ban on second terms, has also been criticized. Critics also raised concerns about the transparency and security of the online voting system. The Supreme Court reinterpreted a provision to allow Bukele to run for a second term. The court ruling, combined with a sharp drop in violence and a media machine that pumps out pro-government propaganda, has earned Bukele a strong base in El Salvador and abroad. How a post office drama galvanized Britain. Financial Times. ITV's drama series about the UK's post office scandal, Mr. Bates vs. the Post Office, has been successful in changing the country's political debate, two months after the broadcaster failed to capture attention with a reality show featuring Nigel Farage. The series, which recounts how subpostmasters were wrongly accused of theft due to flaws in an IT system, has led to politicians from all parties demanding swifter justice. The show's success has been attributed to the British public's sense of fair play and its depiction of an institution corrupted by outsourcing and corporate hierarchies. Student loans to cost taxpayer an extra £10 billion. Telegraph. The Institute for Fiscal Studies, IFS, has warned that the cost to taxpayers of funding student loans is set to surge by over £10 billion, $13 billion, per year as interest rates rise. The IFS predicts that the government will now incur a loss on loans which are and are not fully repaid by graduates due to rising borrowing costs. The government's borrowing costs for student loans have historically been lower than the interest rates charged, enabling the government to make a profit on the debt. However, higher interest rates have increased the funding costs of student loans from 1.2% to 4%, exceeding the expected interest rates charged on student loans. High interest rates add £10 billion to cost of England's student loan system. Financial Times. The Institute for Fiscal Studies has stated that higher interest rates increase the likely cost of England's student loan system by more than £10 billion a year, although this will not be captured by official measures. The think tank stated that the UK government could expect to make a total net loss of £7 billion a year on loans for people starting courses last year, compared with an annual profit of £3.2 billion if the government's own borrowing costs had remained at their late 2021 level. The difference is due to the annual yield on 15-year gilts rising from 1.2% to 4% by the end of 2023. In Charleston, Biden tells black voters they don't count to Trump. Bloomberg. 
President Joe Biden traveled to South Carolina to appeal to black voters, who are crucial to his re-election chances. Biden spoke at a historic black church and invoked the history of the American Civil War, arguing that former President Donald Trump and Republicans are seeking to disenfranchise black Americans. Biden needs black communities in Atlanta, Philadelphia, and Detroit to turn out in November in order to carry states that will decide the 2024 election. However, polls show that black voters have grown increasingly frustrated with the administration on key issues. Well, my dear viewers, it seems like we've got quite the lineup of news today. From student loan debt cancellation to Saudi Arabia's ambitions in the mining sector, and even a drama series that has sparked political change in the UK. And let's not forget about President Biden's visit to South Carolina to appeal to black voters. So, let's dive in and analyze these stories, shall we? First up, we have President Biden's promise to cancel a new batch of student loan debt. Now, this is a topic that has been hotly debated for quite some time. But it looks like Biden is finally taking action. Borrowers who meet certain criteria will have their remaining loans cancelled, which is expected to help community college borrowers, low-income borrowers, and those struggling to repay their loans. It's a step in the right direction, but keep in mind that this will only apply to a specific group of borrowers. So, if you're not part of the lucky few, you might still be stuck with those student loans. Next, we have Saudi Arabia's ambitions to become the Saudi Arabia of minerals. It's no secret that the country has been heavily reliant on oil for its economy. But now, they're looking to diversify their industries, and mining seems to be the way to go. With an estimated mineral wealth of $2.5 trillion, including deposits of gold, copper, and zinc, Saudi Arabia is making moves to attract foreign investment and develop its mining sector. This could be a game-changer for the country and its economy. Moving on, we have El Salvador's upcoming presidential election and the surge in votes from the diaspora. Over 51,000 Salvadorans living abroad have already cast their votes, and this is expected to benefit President Bukele, who launched the internet voting system. Now, Bukele has been praised for his crackdown on gang violence, but he's also faced criticism for undermining democracy and seeking re-election despite a constitutional ban on second terms. It's a complex situation, but it's clear that the overseas vote is having an impact on the upcoming election. Now, let's talk about a drama series that's making waves in the UK. ITV's Mr. Bates vs. The Post Office has managed to galvanize the country and change the political debate. The series tells the story of sub-postmasters wrongly accused of theft due to flaws in an IT system. It has shed light on the outsourcing and corporate hierarchies that corrupted the institution, leading to demands for swifter justice from politicians across party lines. It's a reminder of the power of storytelling and the impact it can have on public opinion. And finally, we have President Biden's visit to South Carolina to appeal to black voters. Now, black voters are crucial to Biden's re-election chances, but recent polls show that there's growing frustration within the black community towards the administration on key issues. Biden's speech at a historic black church aimed to highlight the efforts of former President Trump and Republicans to disenfranchise black Americans. It's a critical moment for Biden as he seeks to maintain the support of black communities in key states. Well, there you have it, folks. A lot to unpack today. From student loans to mining ambitions, from elections to political dramas, and even the delicate dance of appealing to voters. It's a lot to take in, but that's what we're here for. So, what are your thoughts on these stories? Do you have any burning questions or insightful comments? Don't be shy, let's discuss. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.